Recently, a viewer requested a video on how to make our own strspn function in C. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Let's first go over how the function works. So the function is included in the string library. So the first thing we'll do is include the string.h library. And the way the function works is that it's going to be passed two strings as arguments. And it's going to return the length of the initial substring of the first string made up of entirely characters found in the second string. So after making this string, I'll make a second string called digits. And this string will be the digits from zero to nine. And we'll call the str spn function and we'll pass it string and digits. And what it's going to return is the length of the initial substring of string made up of entirely characters found in digits. So that should be five because we have five digits to start this string. We'll assign the return value from the function to a variable called length, because it's going to be the length of that initial substring. The type of the variable is going to be size underscore t, which is basically an unsigned integer. That's the type that's used by strspn and other functions in the string.h library. So we're going to use that here as well. Then we can print out the length. So we'll say printf initial substring length, and we'll output the length here. We'll have percent CU with a new line and we'll output length here. And if we save this and run it, we should get a length of five and we do. So that's how the official function works. Now let's make our own version of the str spn function. So the function declaration is going to look like this. We'll have size underscore T for the return type, just like the real function. We'll have an underscore in front of the str spn function name to differentiate our function from the real function. The arguments are going to be const car star str1 and const car star str2. And what we have are two string parameters. We have the const keyword here because we're not going to actually change either string. So that's why we have a pointer to a const car. Now we'll copy and paste this function declaration and we'll provide a definition of the function down here. And the way we're going to solve this problem is we're going to loop through the first string one character at a time. And what we're going to do is try to find a matching character in the second string for that character. We're going to keep track of a length as we go through that first string one character at a time. Every time we find a matching character in the second string, we're going to increment that length. Once we can no longer find a matching character, we're going to return that length, whatever it is. It might even be zero. So we'll start off that initial length variable at zero. We'll say size underscore t initial length is equal to zero. And that's going to be the ultimate return value. That's going to be the initial substring length that we actually return. So we're going to say return initial length. We'll find the string length of both string one and string two, because we're going to use those lengths to know when to stop each loop that we're going to use. So we're going to say size underscore t len1 is equal to str len str1. So we're going to use the string length function that's also from the string.h library to find the length of each string. It's going to return the number of characters in the string, not including the special null terminator character that ends the string. We'll also have size underscore t len2 is equal to str len str2 to find the length of the second string. Next, we'll have an outer loop that goes through each character in the first string. So we'll say for size underscore t i is equal to zero, i is less than len1 i plus plus. And so what we're doing here is taking the counter variable i from zero all the way to the length of that first string. So we're going to go through the string one character at a time until the end of the string. Next, we'll have an inner loop that goes through each character in string two and checks to see if any of these characters match with the character we're currently looking at in string one as given by index i. So we'll have four size underscore t j is equal to zero. J is less than len two j plus plus. So this loop is going to use the counter variable j to go through each character in string two. And we're going to check to see if the character 
appy index j in string two is a match with the character at index i in string one. If it is, we found a match. Now to keep track of whether we found a match or not, I'm going to use a Boolean value. What I'll do is include the bool library that allows me to declare a bool type variable and to use true and false values. So we're going to include stdbool.h. Then down here, I can actually use the bool type. So I can say bool found match is equal to false. So we're going to start off with the assumption before running this inner loop here that there's not going to be a match in the second string. If we find a match, we're going to set found match to true. And once we've found a matching character in string two, we can actually just stop this inner loop because once we found a match, we found a match. That's it. Now we'll check to see if we found a match. So if we haven't found a match, so if not found match, we're going to actually break out of this outer loop because at that point we've reached the end of the initial substring of the first string made up of entirely characters found in the second string. It means we didn't find a match. So we're going to break and we're going to stop. Otherwise, if we did find a match, we're going to increment the initial length by one because we found one more character in the initial substring of string one that is found in string two as well. So this should actually be the function right here. We can save it and we'll test it out. So here we'll have underscore strspn to call our version of the function. We'll save this and run it. And we get initial substring length of five. So it does appear to be working. Now just to go over how the function is working one more time. The outer loop here is going through each character in string one, one character at a time. So first we're looking at this character, then this character, then this character. This inner loop here is going through each character in the second string. And we're trying to find if there's a character that matches the character we're currently looking at in string one. So here, when we're looking at two here in this first string, we're going to go through the digit string one character at a time. And eventually we're going to find a match. We're going to see that two here matches two here. When we do find a match, we set found match to true and we stop looking. Now, if we never find a match, found match will still be false. And in that case, we're going to stop the outer loop. If we do find a match, we're going to increment the initial length one more time to recognize that we found one more character in the initial substring of string one that is made up of entirely of characters found in string two. And again, we return the initial length no matter what at the end of the function, even if we never find a matching character, initial length is going to be zero because that's what we set it to initially. Now, this version of the function that I've made is intended to be easier to understand. We could make a smaller version of this function using more advanced concepts like pointers and pointer arithmetic instead of counter variables to access each string character. And we could check for the null terminator character to identify the end of the string rather than using the string length function. But I'll leave that version for a possible future video. I hope this video has helped you to understand how to implement the strspn function in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.